Labor's support is at 55%. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your shine of coffee, I want to have a look at some polling data from Roy Morgan about, well, Labor and the Liberal Party. ALP are at 55.5%. This is Remember, we're coming to an election year and one of the benefits is the fantastic cartoons that One Nation are putting out, which I, even if you're not a fan of their party or their policies, you've got to check out those cartoons because they're, they're bloody brilliant. But anyway, let, let's have a look here at what Roy Morgan have got. So ALP, 55.5% increases the lead over LNP at 445 Now, I think a lot of people are going to be angry and frustrated at the premiers, and they're going to, well, they're going to vote. They're going to vote for a minor, at the, or they're going to take out their frustration at the federal level. And it's, it's going to be interesting. I mean, because you vote for Greens, it's pretty much a de, de facto vote for Labor. Labor needs Greens' preferences to get in. And LMP, they're going to be hemorrhaging votes to the Libertarians. They're going to be hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging votes to UAP and to One Nation. So we'll have to see how this election works out. If people use their preferences smartly, what we'll end up with in the end. I'd love to see one of the big two forming a coalition with a minor party. That's, that's what we want. You want some compromise there in politics so all opinions are represented, even p- opinions you don't like. I know a lot of the viewers of the channel probably don't like the Greens because you're smart, attractive, incredibly intelligent people. And that makes sense, but you still want them there because you want a diversity of opinion. Here's the thing, guys. We actually, diversity is a strength with opinion, with opinion, not the Pantone color system. No, no, no. It's opinion where you, you can have diversity and then you want the politicians to fight and argue. Not like the cash ban, where there are all these speeches to an empty bloody room. Anyway, anyway. So it's the largest since the last election as the government splinters on vaccine mandates. ALP support is now at 55.5%, up two points since early November. On 445 down two points on a two-party preferred basis, according to the latest Roy Morgan poll on federal voting intentions conducted over the last two weekends. I'll zoom in one more. There we go. This is the largest two-party preferred lead held by the ALP since the 2019 federal election and exceeds the, uh, the ALP's lead during the height of the 2020 bushfire crisis. The swing to the ALP came as there have been growing protests around Australia against vaccine mandates being introduced by various state governments. This week, several government members have threatened to abstain from voting on new legislation until the federal government confronts the issue on vaccine mandates. And it's funny because we've got Labor Party doing it everywhere in most of the states. There you go. And, And there's another article I'll just draw your attention to here. From Roy Morgan, over three quarters of Victorians, 76% agree that an employed worker in Victoria is not allowed to enter their employer's workplace unless fully vaccinated. You've got a big chunk of people that are advocating for these mandates, essentially. Guys, so Dan Andrews' popularity is over 60%. And you may say, oh, I don't believe it, it's not true. But you've got to think, maybe you're in a social media bubble. Maybe the people you hang out with and meet aren't going to tell you that they love Andrews if you're a diehard opposed to him. Or maybe you're just not hanging out with a diverse group of people. That's, that's the thing, everyone. You've got to be careful if you're stuck in a bubble. If all the people you talk to have the same opinion of you, you may get the, the wrong impression and you may be shocked when you see, oh, look, the mob, the majority, democracy, voted differently. That, that's why I think we're seeing... A, oh, many people becoming politically active for the first time in their lives, and I hope they're not disheartened by some defeats along the road. Remember, it's a slow path to victory. If you want to shift Australia away from our chartist socialist thinking, it's going to be a multi-generational effort, everyone, and it's going to be slow and hard. We're probably going to see a ramp up of authoritarianism coming soon. I mean, the people are, are shocked, are shocked at what's happening. At, at Howard Springs, that you know, oh, people can be sent to these facilities, but what happened in Victoria with the public housing? What did they do there? They locked them all up, guys. So, and there's probably a whole lot of people supporting it too in the public. That, that's just this is 
Australia. We we're not Americans. We don't have that same liberty focused culture, guys. Okay, that's not the majority. We're seeing it in the poll results. Not that I want to discourage people, but I want you to have a realistic understanding of what's going on and how it's going to be a bit of a slow path away from where Australia's heading. Okay, it's a slow path away. It's going to be a lot of years pulling us out of socialism to more individual liberty focus. That's going to take some time. The results also came after Prime Minister Scott Morrison returned from the G20 summit in Rome and then the UN United Nations Climate Change Conference in of the parties. Morrison has been accused of doing the bare minimum at COP26 by committing to a target of net zero carbon dioxide emissions by 2020, and clearly the trip failed to produce any bounce in electoral support. Well, of course not. Conservatives don't care about that. If a federal election was held now, the ALP would be elected with a similar margin to that won by Malcolm Fraser in the 75 federal election. This Roy Morgan uh, poll on federal voting intentions and the government confidence was conducted by telephone and online interview over the last two weekends. They interviewed 2,795 Australian electors aged 18 plus on the weekends of November 13th, 14th, 21, 20 uh, this year. A higher than unusual 7% of electors unchanged from early November can't say who they want to vote for. So people are still frustrated and still not sure. And we have a look here. Do they have a chart? So there you go. I mean, look at that. Guys, look at that. Wow. Entering lockdown for the first time. Boom. Labor. Liberal. Crashes to the bottom. This is definitely going to be an interesting election year to see what happens here, guys. So let's have a bit of a talk about this. So I'm not surprised that Labor support is high. I, I would be shocked if we don't have a bit of a protest vote against the federal government at the next election. I'm hoping people learn the power of their preferences. We have one of the best electoral systems here in Australia. And no, it's not, it's not you know, dodgy. It's not all controlled. It's not all pre-selected. Every candidate can have a, a, you know, a volunteer go and observe the count. And then can cross-check the data. So, and there's a paper trail, everyone. We're not America, okay? We've got one of the best voting systems in the world. And the fact that we actually have preferences, it's a superpower. You can vote for a minor party, even if they're not going to win, just to help them get above the 3% so they can get some funding, so they can continue the fight, so they can send a message to the big parties that you only got in because of preferences from this minor one. Maybe it's time you paid attention to it. Get your minor candidates in the Senate, guys. If you can get some minor people in the House of Reps, that would be a fantastic victory. But it's going to be tough and it's going to be a long road. Don't get disheartened. Anyway, take care, guys. And I'd like you to have a look at this last video about, well, support for Dan Andrews over 60%. I can't say I'm surprised at that either. And if if you're... That shock, just remember how many civil servants haven't been affected by the lockdowns. Take care, guys. I'll see you next time.